silence and the speech that we're going to read in English and in German is written by a student who is um, uncomfortable exposing themselves. So yeah, we fear of being targeted, so maybe that's also something to think about. On January 29th, six-year-old Hin Rajab was in the family car with her aunt, uncle, and three cousins, trying to flee Gaza City and evade Israeli tanks. The tanks attacked the car, resulting in the deaths of all of Hin's relatives, while she miraculously survived. The call emergency operators asking to be saved. She kept repeating, come save me, on the phone until her call ended abruptly. Nearly two weeks later, her relatives found the bodies of Hind, her family, and a pair of paramedics among the rubble and wreckage near the spot where they were killed. Hind's mother says, for every person who heard my voice and my daughter's pleading voice, yet did not rescue her, I will question them before God on the day of judgment. Netanyahu, Biden, and all those who collaborated against us, against Gaza and its people, I pray against them from the depths of my heart. On April 30th, Columbia University students renamed Hamilton's Hall to Hins Hall in commemoration of Hins life and as part of their protest movement against the genocide of Gaza. The choice of Hamilton Hall was not random, as it was always occupied during previous decades to protest for black movement, Vietnam War, and the apartheid in South Africa. When Hin's mother knew of the naming of the hall, she said that she wished this was done during her lifetime to save her instead of commemorating her death. If only we can celebrate the lives of Palestinians instead of their corpses. If only we can empower them before their deaths and why they are alive. If only mothers can witness the long lives of their children instead of their long painful deaths. If only children can witness the lives of their mothers instead of identifying the dead bodies of their parents. We remember the little girl who kept screaming, I knew her from her hair, I knew her from her hair, when seeing the dead body of her mother. This genocide already has and will continue to have unredeemable consequences on families. Lives will continue with fathers without sons, mothers without daughters, wives without husbands, brothers without sisters, and husbands without wives. Family carrying this broken weight of death and grief for decades to come. If this world cares about motherhood or womanhood as it claims, we wouldn't let live to allow such horror to exist. It is our duty to do the best we can to make this stop. It is our duty to celebrate the lives of Palestinians instead of having to mourn their deaths. It is our duty to save what we can save. We're not telling the story of Hind for us to feel empty grief and pity towards Palestinians, but for all of us to empower their lives to resist the genocidal violence they're facing. Palestinians don't need our tears, but they need us to use our privileges from our safe homes to channel the resistance to bring back Gaza and Palestine as they were. We need to take over the strength and bravery that Palestinians are showing the world every single day to our spaces, because whatever we're trying to do is nothing in comparison to someone stuck under the rubble, someone injured or someone dead. Nothing compared to a shattered and displaced family, nothing compared to having to start building a semblance of a home through an ever displaced tent. Now, more than ever, each one of us needs to position ourselves to this violence, being aware of our privilege, using it to be loud, and channel the justice we desire for this world. How are we... Sorry, how are the institutions we're working on, studying in, participating in this? What can we do to stop it? Are we having the hard conversations with our relatives and friends are we calling out polit politicians on their hypocrisy? Are we educating ourselves? How are we using our money to aid and to save the life of Palestinians? What are we doing for the yet alive Palestinian Hins to save them before their last call? What are we doing to stop this blood? If children like Hins still have the strength to continue to fight in the midst of rubble and death, how can we remain inactive? Hin's voice was unfortunately not heard in this time. It is too late for that now. But let us decide here and now that we will be her voice. We will no longer stay by, stand by and watch the freedom and dignity of the people of Gaza and all of Palestine. Gaza, we hear you.